Okay, hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. I'm going to try to stamp out a cave scene uh, with a little nod towards um, kind of Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, that uh, storyline here. Someone brought up um, the, uh, Lord of the Rings on uh, Facebook, and I thought, oh yeah, we should do something like that. You know, there's a lot of um, cave and mine types of... Uh, you know, sequences, scenes in um, that storyline, and uh, I thought we would do something like that. So here I am just composing um, a rough kind of uh, composition here. Well, I don't know if it's rough, but it's an improvised um, so, no, kind of scenario here. All right, now I don't have dwarves or um, like a set from uh, The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings or something like that with a bunch of dwarves or Gollum or something like that, but I have this little guy from um, an Edward Gorey set. You can't find it anymore, sorry. Um, but uh, I bought that set. I, I really like Edward Gorey, the artist. <laughs> Some of these funky um, books and drawings and whatnot. And... Uh, um, they had a little set, probably in the 90s or something like that. It's one of those types of sets that you'd find in, like, a Barnes & Noble or something like that. You didn't really see it at the uh, stamp stores. It was just one of those cheap foam sets, and, uh, I picked that up. And, of course, you know, it's probably not available any longer. <laughs> just like all those types of things. I don't know, those kind of licensed, um, sets. You don't really see licensed stamp um, things anymore. Stamps, you know, stamp designs, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe there's some Disney, but I, I don't even know if, you know, you, you see anything like that out there anymore. But what I'm doing is I'm just kind of creating a scenario here with a little bit of a, like these pools, um, kind of golems. I don't know what it was. It was it a cave or whatever. And, uh, I'm going to put this guy right up on the top of this rock here. I should have re-inked my uh, pad there. I'm getting some really light impressions. But this whole scene is going to be fairly dark anyway. You know, I need some light in there so that we can see what we're kind of doing. But um, we're going to keep it light. And, uh, okay, so those were some the boulders with uh, lichen, uh, brookside boulders in here. And then I have this other stamp here called Ledge, okay? And it's just some more rocks, and I liked what I what happened with that the other day. Um, I put that, I usually don't use it kind of like perpendicular with these types of rocks, but I just want some other type of texture in the background, okay? So what I'm doing is I'll go for some second impressions, okay, let's see, like this. In the background here. Now I could ma take the time to mask this off, but I'm doing the second impression. Well, maybe I'll wipe some of it off like that. You know, because this is all going to be fairly dark over here, so I don't need to be real careful about um, masking and whatnot. Plus, designs. You know, I always tell people the design stampscapes designs are meant to be blended in with one another. Okay. Um, so that is what we are doing here. Okay, now this guy is going to be right here. And I do want a little bit of texture behind him, but it has to be light. If it's really quite dark, like a strong impression, like right over here, then that's going to be too busy right in front of our little guy here. It's He's a silhouette, you know, kind of a dark. He has some texture in him, though, and lighting. Okay. But... You know, he really needs to stand out against that background there, so... Um, let's go for... One, two impressions, okay, so that it's really, really... The background is not really competing with them, okay? Alright, so something like that. And then... Um, we can go back to a slightly darker impression. Let's go one impression off, and then go like that, okay? So you can see right in here, I've left it a little bit lighter. 
and I think that he'll stand out against that background just fine, don't you? All right, so we have that. It's kind of like a vertical walls and back of these uh, rocks right here. All right, now this should come around fairly quickly, I would hope. I don't know. Um, these, I'm stamping in on glossy cardstock, and, and these are going to be, uh, let's see, yeah, it's a little bit moist right now. So if I get some smearing, you know, it's not really going to be a big deal. Um, because we're going to be using um, a lot of tone on here anyways. It's going to be a dark scene. But even if it wasn't a dark scene, it's not really a big deal because we're going to be blending tones in here anyway. Okay? All right, now what are we doing here as far as kind of a lighting scheme? Okay? When you see something like this, you, you have to kind of envision yourself as a, a lighting director on a stage. Okay? Now, I know none of us probably have ever done anything like that. But, okay, roughly speaking, okay, this little guy is going to be right here. So, we want our characters on our stage to be kind of illuminated, right? So, I'm going to illuminate this background. Well, how do you illuminate the background? Well, you take the area and you just make it darker around it, okay? It's like when I'm doing um, dark paper scenes, <laughs> you know, we're, we're actually illuminating something with white pigment ink, okay? Now, I might use some white pigment ink in here as well, but on this, when we're starting with white paper, in order to make something look light, you just take the area around it and make it darker. So, see that light there? It's like a spotlight, right? And if he's going to be right here, then I can take this. Now, see, I'm not working with black. I'm working with, I don't know, like a 2% gray because my paper towel is so dry. So, a lot of times people ask me, how do you blend things so easily? Okay, and what they're talking about in terms of color application is, see, I'm using this. I mean, that's barely visible, right? And I've done several swipes, so that's why I don't get any, you know, real harsh marks, okay? So see this rock right here where I'm toning it in? All right, it's just a perfectly blended application of this. I mean, you can blend on... Copy paper, too. You know, I mean, it's harder because it's so porous and whatnot. Now, I mean, eventually we're going to have to re-ink like this, but I don't want to blend with this, right? So you just blend with this, okay? Just a really light touch when you first use your ink, okay? So see, down here, I'm using a much lighter touch when I'm using a wetter applicator, okay? And then, you know, I kind of start dabbing it around a little bit harder, you know, because I'm not dabbing black, I'm dabbing like, I don't know, like a 2% gray. If it, if it isn't 1%, it's just barely visible. Is this longer to do because I'm using so little? No, it's much a shorter time. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not halfway done with this, but, you know, I, I you know, toned in a pretty decent amount of this so far. It's almost half the page. Now, I, I, I'm going to develop the shadows and things like that a lot more. This is where I'm getting fingerprints all over it, but, you know, don't sweat it. It's not really any big deal, because you can just keep toning in, or if you get, you know, a really big fingerprint there, that wouldn't be good. But we can just use some white pigment ink over the top of it if we want to. All right, so see this right here, where I'm developing my shadows a little bit more... Um, the darker you take some areas, the lighter the lights will seem. Not that we want it, you know, super light or anything like that, but, again, it is like a stage. We're not thinking about, we're not, we're not toning this in as if it were a completely non-illuminated cave, you know, out in nature. We're using this like a stage, okay? So this is going to be, imagine watching, you know, The Hobbit, on stage or something like that, you know, they're, you know, they're not going to have Gollum sitting there on some kind of rock out in the middle of this kind of underground kind of pond, you know, in the darkness so that we can't see it, you know, we're going to illuminate it accordingly, all right? All right, so we have all this area down here. Okay, so that's about kind of illuminating an area for our little subject matter. Now, what I do through the rest of the scene is I kind of oscillate my lights and darks, but just in general, you know, see how that 
these rocks are darker at the base, right? And then they tonally get lighter in certain areas. Well, I'm just hitting those same areas again with additional tones. See how this rock right here is darker at the base? And I come like this, and I reiterate it with some more ink. So see how much more rounded and volume kind of oriented this rock is. It's not like an outline or something like that, okay? So how to tone in, you know, rocks or, or anything, any design that I have in the Stampscapes line, you can just take your cues from how I've already um, created volumes through the use of shadow, okay? Or shade or whatever, darkness, and you just do it accordingly. You just reiterate it accordingly by adding in more tone in those areas. See, when you're doing rubber stamp designs, you can't have, you know, you can't create something that's just gray. So all of that is black, but it's a black dot separated by, you know, space. The more densely applied um, your dots are, how condensed they are, the darker it seems. So that's the illusion of kind of um, stippling. black and white print, like in newspapers, they call it halftones, they do, to break down grayscale, to break it into all black and white. All right, so you see things getting darker over here. I'm kind of darkening in my wall. Now, here's what I do. I don't just kind of tone in everything uniformly, okay? What I do is I try to oscillate things a little bit, okay? So on this rock, rock wall in the background, instead of just doing it all uniformly, what you have is dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, okay? I mean, it doesn't, they don't all have to be equal in terms of your application, okay? But, but that's just a general type of um, kind of lighting convention that you do. We learned that in art, um, I was in college, but um, um, they call it checkerboarding, or one of my teachers did. It's where you just kind of oscillate things to make it um, a, more, a little bit more visually interesting, you know, so you have um, some variety going in there. And that's what I also do in my designs, okay? They're kind of, you oscillate the darks and lights, dark, light, dark, you know, light, dark, light. And you do it throughout that, and that's what you want to look for generally in stamp designs if you want to have them kind of with a generally um, richer type of um, inherent design to them. You can see it in all my pieces right here. Dark, light, dark. And if you go up top like this, you see in the lighter area, it goes from dark, light, dark, light, dark, light in here. And then there's an area down here that's oscillated with darks and lights. If those don't exist in a stamp design, what the onus is kind of up to you to kind of put it in there. So I try to just have those types of um, design elements just inherent in the design um, to give it um, you know, a, a really good head start in terms of um, the overall richness of your visual palette that you're working with in terms of value. Value is a really important element um, when it comes to drawing. Um, and value means, uh, meaning the relative light and darkness, okay? So in a scene like this, when we have, you know, a cave type of situation, you know, and this is going to be relatively uh, monochromatic, um, value is kind of the most important thing, um, visually speaking, right here, okay? So you see this how it's kind of, you know, I'm leaving some areas a little bit um, darker, something, you know, or creating things a little bit darker, and then in some areas I'm leaving certain things light, okay? Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky, okay? Now see, when I'm going on to a big open area like that, I mean, you can kind of put a little water on here or something like that if you want to get, because this is really going um, kind of black ink, you know, but it's gray into a completely white area, so you're using kind of the polar extremes in terms of um, values that you can start off with, but see, what I'm doing is I'm just using a really light touch, and what you do is you stay in one area, and you kind of blend it across like that, okay? 
I'm just using a paper towel, sponges, and you know things like if you've been stamping a while and you have something like the Colorbox Stylus tools, those are really good tools to use. It's a sponge applicator. But a paper towel, you know, can suffice. You can get, you know, a pretty good effect with that. Let's say you stay in one area like this and just keep moving it across like that. And then you get kind of this transitioning kind of streak like that. And those little striations like that kind of create for a nice um, overall texture and surface. Okay. This right here, I mean, I'm even streaking across this rock right here. Okay. How much pressure you use just depends on how much of an application of ink you want and how wet your applicator is at that given time. Okay. So vary things, make some rocks a little bit darker. Okay, like that maybe. Have a little bit lighter there, make your shadows a little bit darker in some areas. But see that now? How varied that is right there. And you can just, you can't really, you can, well, I was going to say, you can't really make things lighter after you've made them darker. You can't really remove dye-based ink. And I'm not talking about doing some kind of bleaching technique. No one's going to want to do that. Um, you can add some pigment ink in some areas. But, you know, like I said, you know, when you're doing this type of application of color or tone or, you know, ink and making things darker... Things are happening, they're not happening really super fast, so you can just kind of watch what you're doing, you know, and adjust accordingly. If you think, oh my gosh, it's getting a little bit too dark, then just don't add anymore. But it's not like you're doing, like, 100 taps all at once, you know, you're doing them one at a time, you know. And you can just watch and adjust accordingly, if it's, you know. The thing about it is you have to kind of, hold it out at arm's distance here and take a look and see how dark things are getting, you know, because when we're doing something like this, it's easy to focus into a, you know, one inch square little area. And then when you kind of look at it on the overall, it's like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have done that. So, you know, as you're working kind of small areas like this, you know, kind of hold it back and look at it at arm's distance, you know, so we're looking at it like this and periodically, Take a look at it, see what the overall is looking like, and adjust accordingly. So in other words, you just kind of watch what you're doing. And I know we're, we're seeing our scene, but we're not often, you know, looking at what we're doing, unless can we hold it out at arm's distance, you know, to get your bearings of, you know, exactly kind of where you are in the piece, okay? Now what I like doing is I like kind of fine-tuning things like this. Let's see, let's add in some shadow down here at the base of this rock. Now, I'm normally, you know, kind of using a little bit less ink in certain areas, but this is supposed to be kind of a, a dark, murky, um, you know, visual scenario in this, you know, <laughs> golems. What I don't know, it's kind of his lair or whatever, you know. And I know this isn't Gollum, it's, I don't know, maybe it's his cousin or something like that, I'm joking, but. Um, yeah, we want it kind of dark and dreary. Or maybe this is Gollum, but that was like his, you know, one of his un incarnations before, you know, the, the character we've come to know him as. Or know what he, you know, know him, what he looks like. All right, see, now it's getting kind of darker out here. I'm leaving, you know, retaining some of those lighter areas, okay? Let's tone in some of this rock right here, actually. 
I won't go too light with it up there, you know, because he's going to be dark right there. I never read the books. Yeah, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I have some friends that did though. I have a friend that I think he I think he reads it every I don't know few years. Uh, that was before you know you know the movies came out. All right. More down here in the water area, or what will become the water area. I'm still, I'm kind of deciding on what color I want that water area to be. Because I want it kind of a bluish tinge. Alright, now I am keeping in mind that I'm going to tint all of this with a couple of uh, Distress Ink colors. I like that kind of aged um, characteristic of those tones quite a lot. Alright, I think that is about right. Hmm. Maybe a little bit darker over here, maybe. See how I'll kind of oscillate a little bit more. See how I kind of made it a little bit darker right there? So that, it just, it makes the lighter things seem a little bit lighter when you do that. Okay. Go like this. See how that rock is light, and I made the little area right above it a little bit darker, so that it goes you know, dark, light, dark. All right, so that, there's that checkerboarding type of thing. I don't know. I mean, you can keep doing that and keep refining it or whatever. You know, I don't want to, you know, do this toning forever. I think this is just fine, but... Um, I don't know. I do like developing those kind of darkest areas, though. Okay... The darker you take any area of a given piece, the lighter all the lighter areas are going to seem. So you make something one step darker, and the lighter things that are lighter than it, not even the lightest areas, but anything lighter than it seems one step lighter. Okay? Because you're just working with contrast. We're not working with, you know, like true light here. Okay? All right. That looks about right, or good enough, I should say. Yeah, yeah, okay. Not too bad for, I don't know, a little quarter piece of uh, paper towel that was used previously as well, so you get a lot of mileage out of, uh, out of your pieces. Okay, so the Distress Ink, let's go with a lot of the, the Walnut Stain... And let's go with some antique linen as well. I'll, okay, now I'm, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. We're going to tint over a lot of this. And this is a half-page piece right here, okay? Um, a lot of that black is, you know, probably still a touch moist. Should I... Here, I'll heat set it for a couple seconds. I don't want to heat set it too much because I, I do want it kind of moist to work on. I mean by that is I want it a little bit moist to work on is because I want these inks to spread around kind of nicely. I don't want it completely. It's easier to kind of, you know, blend your inks around if the paper is a little bit moist, right? Does that make sense? Because you're kind of applying moist into moist. 
All right, so here's my little trick. I, I could go with the antique linen and just dip into it like this, but I have a lot of area to cover. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take that same color antique linen, and I'm just going to put a few drops on here like this. A lot of times I put it, you know, like on the case like that, and I just sop it up like that and go. All right. But, oops, <laughs> I had blue on there, see? That's what I've done before. Okay, here, I'm going to use a little bit of blue down here anyway. All right, so let me, I don't know, let me adjust that a little bit. Okay, so let's take this and just tint down here. Retain some of that lightness area down there, okay? So kind of watch what you're doing. All right, and then kind of dry it too much over there because I'm just kind of removing some of that black ink in that area. All right. Okay, so adding it down like so, all right? So, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a different color than black in here. All right. Okay, I'm just going to leave that little bit of blue in there. All right, now I was going with that into a fairly light area, but let's come in with this now into these other areas right here, okay? So this is a kind of a sopping wet piece of, um, you know, paper towel. Paper towels absorb moisture, right? That's what they're designed to do. So the fact that they absorb moisture allows them to um, transfer moisture as well because they're sopping wet, you know? So that's what makes this type of material, it doesn't have to be a paper towel, but any type of applicator you want, um, if you're applying something, then it has to be somewhat absorbent, right? So you want the type of uh, materials that will absorb moisture, okay? There are some types of materials out there that are, um, they're kind of designed for dry material, but people have come to use them with wet material because they kind of look like they would be kind of designed to do something like that. But if they're kind of designed for dry and you're doing it with wet, you can do that, but you have to kind of muscle it, you know, because it's, you know, you're using something kind of in a way that's not, you know, the way it was designed for. Okay. All right, so kind of adding this tint over everything. Can you tell the difference, you know, as I'm going over it? So if I want some areas to be a little bit light, then I'm just, you know, not going over it too much. I do, I want to bring a little bit of color into it, but I don't want it so dark that it just kind of, I lose my light, uh, my lighting in there. So it's the question, you know, it's like, how dark do you want it to go? You know, you know that's the question I'm asking myself. Because I'm used to having much lighter, you know, much more illumination in my pieces. But when we're talking about this thing, you know, this kind of scenario that's supposed to be very dreary, and dark, and dank, you know, um, <laughs> you have to kind of go beyond, uh, you know, what you're typically quite used to, maybe. All right, so, see that right there? Okay. See, I still have my illumination right there. Okay, let's go into the... Uh, okay, now, when I'm going into a darker color, this one, that one was antique linen with a little bit of um, tumbled glass. This is walnut stain. It's a little bit darker. It's not real dark, though. I'm just going to use the pad for that one because I probably won't use maybe quite as much of this one. I don't know. I mean, I might, you know, apply a pretty good amount of it, but I, I start using this one a little bit more in the shadows. I mean, you can use it kind of all over, you know, in this one, in this scenario here, but um, I, it one inking goes a lot um, further because you're applying wet into wet, so the page isn't absorbing your ink so fast, okay? Because you're kind of achieving a, a you know degree of almost super saturation in some areas, so when you're applying it, it's staying much more surface oriented. Okay. So in other ways, we don't need a ton of ink. We just kind of dip in like that, and that's plenty. And I'm using the same applicator, so you know it has some of the other colors in there inherently. So I'm getting some kind of fusion of the existing color, you know, the color that I'm working with now 
plus whatever colors I've used before it. And that makes for an easy transition because it's not one color to the next, it's one color mixed in with the next color. Okay. And plus it's easier to do. You just you, you know, you just use the same thing. Instead of, you know, changing up to a new applicator or something like that. Most of my techniques are all designed around kind of convenience and ease. All right. Here we have that. Okay. All right, shall we just try a tint of another color? This is looking pretty good right now. I'd say it's kind of dreary and whatnot. You know, it has that kind of atmosphere in there. Maybe that's too light back there. What do you think? Let's kind of bring in a touch more tone around it. Maybe he's, he's a little bit too backlit, my character. I haven't stamped him yet because I, I want to kind of get everything in there. I don't want to stamp this out and then apply tone over the top of it and he starts smearing, smudging. I want a nice crisp impression of our, you know, our main star of the scene, okay. All right, now that I have this right here, I'm going to adjust a little bit and make certain things a little bit darker, okay. Maybe I've kind of wiped off some of the black in some of those areas by kind of wiping over it. You know, I get some black on the here. But, so I can just go back in here and build it up. So it's kind of a circular process if it gets too light. I mean, you know, I guess, I guess... When I say you can't, you know, once you make something dark, you can't really remove it. I guess you kind of can, you know, to a degree. You can't make it like the white of the paper or something like that again. But um, kind of dabbing over some of that super saturated um, black ink in those areas did remove some of it because some of it was floating or just sitting on the surface of the paper as opposed to being absorbed and staining it um, very much. All right, so this is really... See, I, I'm applying a lot of this black ink right here, and it's not really getting any darker. It, it's because it's so wet there. That ink is really... And the pulp of the paper is really very, very wet. But it's kind of good, though, because it's happening... My application of black is happening so slowly that you can really control the amount of ink that you apply. Um, just because it happens, you know, it just applies... It builds up, I should say. It builds up very slowly. I'm trying to make the base of that rock a little bit darker in the shadow. Okay, and let's go right down here. have some really deep dark shadows. How's that? I guess we could, you know, we could you know, go online and print out like these little JPEGs or something like that of, you know, Bilbo or something like that. It would be fun to kind of do a little Bilbo and uh, just put them in silhouette and put them right here and have Gollum appear or something, huh? You know, that's the same thing with Gollum. I guess we can print out some kind of little cutout and you can kind of change the size or whatnot. But I'm just going to use my little Edward Gorey stamp. Okay, so that is that. That's pretty dark, I'd say. There's a lot of contrast working in here. Those two rocks are a little bit too light, probably. Um, here, instead of going to black. There, a brand new applicator, right? <laughs> that's, that's what's great about these very 
accessible tools is that they're nice and universally, you know, applicable in terms of different parts of it. You, know, you can just keep using it and using it. Okay, so that is that. Let's go. Okay, I tell you what, I have this little Caribbean blue. It's kind of a warm tinge of a dye based ink blue. That's by Marvy right here. Oh, if you had something like a broken china or maybe a tumbled glass and broken china mixed together, but I'm going to use this one from Marvy. It's a little bit, it's a warmer tinge of blue. It just has a slight tinge of uh, yellow to the blue. It's like a turquoise or something like that. All right, so I'm just kind of doing this and I'm kind of smoothing out the, uh, the surface of the paper towel as I do that. But it's going to be a little bit murky because I'm putting it over the gray here, but I just want that. Okay, <laughs> I've taken off too much ink, so you just ink it up again. You see, I'm just kind of staying in one area. It doesn't even show, right? See, that's how I have all the control over it. See, now it's starting to appear right there. That's what that's what makes it easy. You just kind of keep, you know, you don't do something in one step, you know, kind of uncontrolled that you can do in you know, a dozen steps or 20 steps where you have absolute control over it, okay? So in other words, just by doing this in application right here in, I don't know, probably 30 swipes and having the exact amount applied down that I want, that's better than just going at one and then saying, oh my gosh, I, you know, I applied too much of it or something like that. Or I don't like it, you know. This, I mean, it just happens so slowly that you can really control it. And I'm using a light touch, you know, I'm not kind of going for like this, okay. Let's see, it's just kind of adding a little bit in there and I'll, I'll kind of put a little bit on these rocks, you know, so that some of these rocks are reflecting a touch of that light, maybe, okay? It's just a kind of little hint of it. It's I'm putting it over brown and walnut ink, you know, the colors that I've used down here, you know, the antique linen, black and gray scale, and everything like that, so it's not um, kind of an absolute version of this again. Yeah, I'll put a little bit reflecting off that rock right there. So doesn't that kind of give the essence of kind of reflected light now that you have it kind of reflecting in the water like that. Yeah, putting some more of this in these areas, just to kind of, it kind of gives a little bit more richness to this area. It doesn't look blue, but there's a bluish tinge in here in these different elements. It's kind of interesting for me doing these cave pieces because I, I kind of feel inclined to add some for, uh, foreground in here, but, you know, it's not going to be a foreground and, you know, stuff growing in complete darkness, you know, usually. Okay, let's see here. This rubber on these um, stamps wasn't great. I don't know if they used... These things are probably made in China. It's some cheap rubber. Let's see if I can get a good impression out of it. This isn't a Stampscape stamps, by the, stamp, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Okay. I'm almost tempted to do them in a, a pigment ink, but I think we'll just stay with the dye here. <laughs> I'm seeing if I inked up this pad enough, okay? I don't want it so blobby, because, you know, there's there's not very much detail in them, but there's a little bit of detail. Okay, so let's see. I think I trimmed this these stamps a little bit more, too, but it's about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay. 
I hope I got him on the rock. I might not have stamped it low enough. Stamps have a big shoulder on them, kind of a slanted shoulder, which I don't like. When I have my stamps made, I want the shoulders to be as vertical as possible for placement. Okay, I mean, I could have had him, I don't know, like a sixteenth of an inch a little bit lower, but that's not too bad. See, he's kind of floating over that rock right there. I tell you what, let me grab my... Gosh, I haven't used my uh, stylus tools in a while. I'll just come like this and I'll put a little bit of tone underneath it, you know, like he's you know, sitting on top of that rock right there. And I'll give the, our little... All on a little bit of tone too, maybe. Gollum's uh, uh, brother. I know he doesn't have a brother. Yeah, living down here, you know. Okay, so we'll go like that. Uh, I tell you what, hey, we have our pens here. I don't want to get anywhere near his eyes, so let's take a alcohol pen, okay? And let's just color him in around his eyes, okay? I'm just going to fill in like that. And we have that. Sometimes I forget about the alcohol pens. If you want to go in and add kind of some extra little values to something like this and get in kind of some specific areas. Oh, interesting. The, my dye base inks are just so wet here that this alcohol is removing some of the ink. But it's not because it's mixing with them. It's just that the alcohol, the, the dye base inks are just sitting on the surface of the paper. So it's just really, really dry. I mean, really, really wet, sorry. Okay, so here's these tiny rocks. I added some little textures um, into my cave piece the other day, and it thought these looked really good. So let me go with this. This is just a little texture uh, stamp. Well, it's supposed to be little rocks, but I'm using it as texture here. Okay. And I'm going to be using some white pigment ink in here as well. So um, yeah, let's go for some of that. Let's go for some white. So I stamped in it black. Let me get this ink off. Okay. And we'll go with some white for a little bit of kind of reverse texture, texturing. So I'm kind of blotting off and then stamping it. And if I can't see it, then I come in here with a stronger impression of it in the reverse. Okay, this, these, this texture is standing out a little bit too much here in some of these areas. So what you do, you stamp it out in white, and then you go back in. And now... I mean, you're not really supposed to put, you know, dye based ink over, um, you know, oil based pigment ink, but, you know, it, I'm using the pigment ink so little here. Gosh, I haven't used my stylus tools in such a long time. It's kind of interesting to use that. I use these for so long, um, but I just stopped using them just because, you know, you can't really get them anymore. I mean, if you find a seller for them now, these were clear snap. And what great tools, you know. It's really a great, very functional tool. But what I'm doing right here is I'm just kind of blending in some of those um, textures so that they're more integral, you know, integrated with the, uh, you know, 
something with the background. All right, and that is that. Let's hit this area down here with a little bit more um, rocks and water. You can use the same tiny rock stamp. This one's just a little bit more kind of specialized. It's called rocks and water. Is that what it's called? I forget. Okay, so let's put some of these down here. Okay, so I go in one impression, two impressions, and I'll go with a third impression. The third impression is going to be much lighter, so I'm going to put it in that light area, right? Okay, and I'm trying to turn it the other way too. That's like four impressions right there out of one inking. Maybe the lighter ones are rocks that are deeper, or you know, they're just in the in the uh, in, in a shallower area. Okay, so anyway, that is that. Okay, so we have that down there. Does that look like kind of like deeper water now, maybe? In fact, I'd like that. And let's go with a... Uh... Let's go with the tiny rocks. Let's, let's blend that in. I, I like that variation kind of happening in that area. I'm just bringing some of that texture into some different areas for a little bit of, I don't know, visual continuity. It's subtle, but anytime you kind of carry kind of textures or colors or patterns, you know, into um, multiple areas of a given, I don't know, whatever environment could be interior design, um, it just brings an overall kind of uh, continuity to a, uh, to a space. Okay. Okay, so... That is that. I'm looking for opportunities here for some additional kind of essence. And um, I think normally, like I said, I normally I have much more lighting in an area, which can afford me um, kind of opportunities for additional lighting effects in the form of I'm what I'm thinking about is like mist or something of that sort. It kind of gives nice essence to um, you know, a given visual scenario. But in here, it's just everything is so dark, there's not like an opportunity for that. Like in my last one, I had like light beams running through there. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so this is some white pigment ink. I'll just use the brilliants. Um, and I'll put it where the light meets dark, okay? So it's not or darker. So in other words, just around this kind of illuminated little area in the water, I'll apply some of this ink. Okay. And see, I'm just kind of building it up slowly. Too slowly. Maybe I need to re-ink my white pad. We can think of this like using a little fog machine or something like that if it was a uh, our stage okay yeah I really ink that up it there's a lot on there so I'll stay in the light area a little bit longer before I kind of migrated it out into the darker area okay I'm getting a little bit of a texture right there let's kind of blend that in a little bit this pigment ink doesn't dry so fast that you can't manipulate it after you've already applied it. 
Brilliant's ink will dry a little bit faster than other types of inks. I mean, normally for this, I use other types of pigment inks. I don't use the, uh, the Brilliant's, but the paper is, the page is so wet with ink, I really laid down a lot of, uh, you know, that color and black and distress inks in here, so. So the paper is just moist to begin with, the surface at least. And here's one of those things, if you ever get some area that's just too dark, and if you have a light area next to it, I'm guilty of that all the time. Um, but see, you can kind of come into that area with that white pigmenting, but the, doesn't it look more dreamy down here with that white pigmenting like that? See how I add it where light meets dark, but you feather it out there, you transition it, so here's what you do. In shadows, you add more in the dark, and then you blend it into the light, right? Well, in white, and adding kind of highlights like this, it's not really highlighting, but you add it in the light, okay? And you keep tapping it, and then you kind of go into that darker area, but use a very light touch, okay? And just keep blending it in like that, okay? All the while. A lot of times people get impatient, they go like that. And it's like, I can't see anything, so they squash it down, you know? But that's the thing. It's really barely visible. I mean, it's not like, oh my gosh, you must have so much patience. That took like, you know, like 10 seconds to do. You know, <laughs> it doesn't take a long time. I'm just not getting it in one second like that, you know. I'm just getting it in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how, you know, I added quite a bit right in here, but look at that. I mean, that took like 15 seconds or something like that. It doesn't take a long time. Let's see, it's a little bit dark in here, so you can add a little bit of this kind of creeping mist or fog down here, right? But doesn't that kind of add to the, uh, the overall kind of essence and feel? It's adding something kind of soft into a scene that's otherwise fairly crisp, you know, with uh, crisp impressions, dark and, you know, toning, whatnot. So this is a way to kind of add a little bit of atmosphere. It's something that's in between the objects. It's supposed to be, it represents something kind of suspended in the, uh, you know, the space between, so to speak. Okay, see this rock right here? Watch as I kind of go in here and add this little essence kind of creeping around the back of it like this. What that does is it kind of um, encompasses that rock. So it's something kind of kinesthetic. It's visual kinesthetics. Everything was visual before. And this is visual too, but it has a, it has a feeling of touch now because you're kind of um, enveloping, not encompassing, but enveloping that object a little bit of this moisture in the air. It's like when someone sees a, a picture of like a, a lake in the morning with mist coming off of it. There's a certain feel to it it's because we can feel, you know, kind of visually what's in the air. There's something touching our skin, you know, and self. You kind of become a part of the, uh, you know, the scenario, you know, from a touch standpoint as opposed to just looking at something visually. So that's what just does. I mean, it just, you know, put a little bit of white pigment ink. It, it really, it enhances, but it can also correct, you know. If you don't like something, you kind of put a little bit of fog, you know, around it or in, over a part of it, and it, it pushes it back into the distance visually. So you just kind of build it up and transition it out. But isn't that a little bit more kind of a dreamy of a water scenario? See how texturally different it is from here now, from up here. Before that was just light, just like that is light. I mean, it was different colors and whatnot. 
But that being said, I'd like a little bit of uh, this tone around our, our golem here to let's kind of put a little bit of this pigment ink over his part of his arm, maybe. give it uh, Gollum a little bit. I'm calling him Gollum for this uh, scenario because that's the only thing I have. But um, Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of this on his arm, okay? So I'm saying that we'll, kind of the light is kind of illuminating a part of him. Like that. Is that right there? I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a very tiny little detail like that. It doesn't it seem like, you know, that light is kind of like a part of it. Doesn't his arm look farther back now? Just by kind of illuminating it like so. You have this little area back in here if you want to add a little bit of a, you know, that kind of fog, like maybe there's some water back there or something. I don't know. Just from a textual standpoint, it's just fun to do. That if you want to kind of hit, you know, a couple areas a little bit with a brighter, you know, or a lighter touch, then, you know, use a Q-tip as opposed to a cotton ball. Okay, so, you know how Gollum kind of lost his ring? I forget where, I don't know where it was, I didn't read the books, but if it... Let's say it was in the water here somewhere. I'm going to put a little gem down there. Was that a gold ring? It was probably a gold ring, right? I'm going to do it. I need to do it in a, in a crystal here, though, instead. Because uh, um, it's, just, it's just going to show it much more. The gold is kind of nice. You know, put it in with the rocks. It's very subtle. But I'm going to make this kind of glowing little this is for our benefit too I know it wouldn't be like that you know if it's glowing like that he'd been able to see it you know and find it but you know, we're just doing this for a visual statement for us okay I'm gonna have this a little bit of a glowing light right here Glowing, I'm saying, so I have to kind of transition it so it's a little bit lighter in the center. That's too much here. I'm going to take some of it off. Okay. So see that little glowing little area right there? <laughs> that little guy cracks me up. It, it, it's funny to me that that little creature was in the set. Okay, so I'm going to put a little dab of glue in the center of that little glowing area, and then I'll grab a... Um, Crystal. Uh, I, can't, I don't want to go so small that, you know, it's kind of, but I don't want to go big either. Let's see. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. I mean, it has to be somewhat visible. I, it, it wouldn't fit on his finger or something like that, but... Okay, there it is right there. Kind of little thing. My precious! Yeah. Let me adjust my exposure right here. Okay, this adjusted the exposure of the camera. Eh, it's a little bit lighter than what it looks like on screen, but here we have our little crystal. 
stands out pretty good here with that glow. I think we have to put the glow around it, otherwise it maybe would just be too subtle, but put the area in here, look at him like that. That scenario there. He's lost his uh, he's lost his precious. Maybe this is a situation where he went and found it though. You know, that's maybe it wasn't the first time he's lost it in the past. And this is one of those times where he uh you know, just couldn't find it find it and maybe he's made the connection here, so I don't know. Okay, so anyways, hope you enjoyed the scene. My little um, experiment or whatever scenario for uh, one of my, you know, not my favorite movie, but I really love those uh, movies that came out. Maybe one day I'll read the books or whatnot, but it's my little um, version of a, a given scenario um, situation from the, uh, the books and movie. All right. So anyways, hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you feel so inclined. And hope you visit me for another video in the future.